Hey guys, what is going on? So, uh, gonna be doing a knife, well, you know, a, kind of a review-ish on a knife that, um, it's not mine. Actually, Kenny from In The Pocket uh, sent this guy over to me uh, to check out, which I thought was really cool. Um, and I've had it for a while now. I'm gonna be sending it back soon. Uh, so, okay. I buy mostly American-made knives. Uh, this is a uh, Chavez Ultramar, um, and it's made by Riot, which is a Chinese company. And I have to say, this is a rather impressive knife. Um, there's a couple things that like maybe aren't perfect about it, but I think that goes, you know, without saying for pretty much every knife uh, that I'm aware of, at least. Um, I mean, some people might have a different opinion. I don't think any knife is perfect. I think that um, you're always going to have a compromise. But uh, this knife, as soon as I took it out of uh, the package, and you, you guys can watch my unboxing, uh, it's called like in the pocket unboxing or some shit like that. And, um, yeah, so, uh, I took it out and immediately the first thing I noticed was the action. I'm not a big action guy. Um, you know, I bought a hinderer. I, I ended up getting a gen four because I don't care about like ball bearings, anything like that. Um, I mean, you guys know, I, it, it's not, um, a high priority, I guess for me. Um, and for a while, I, I didn't really know what to think of this knife. Um, just, I mean, just being real, uh, there's a couple things that kind of bug me about it, and there's a lot of things I really enjoy about it. Um, so I guess I'll get right into it. Uh, first thing I, I, I like about it is I like the hollow grind. Uh, it comes to a very, very nice, um, you know very thin edge um almost as thin as the southern actually i don't have it here to show you but um let me see something that you guys would know that's comparable to it thinner than a pair of three uh in my book that's pretty damn good um let's see strider strider's thinner than a pair of three I'd say it's it just in terms of feeling it's probably about the same as uh as an SNG um here why don't I get these guys out of the way um yeah so huge benefit to that um one thing that kind of fucked me up guys and uh you know looks wise I love the way this looks uh absolutely love it um, but when I first got the knife in hand, I wasn't really sure what to do with it. Um, I didn't really get it. Uh, so the compound grind uh, is pretty thick behind the edge. Uh, and, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, it's uh, thicker than a hinderer, uh, XM18. Um, which is pretty thick. Um, let's see. This guy's fairly thick, too. Uh, but that's not really a comparable knife. Never mind. I'm dumb. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Real thick at the tip. I didn't quite get it at first. Um, but, but now I think I have a further understanding of why it's done that way. And really something... The, okay. I'm not a huge fan of compound grinds in terms of performance. Um, in this case, I'm good with it. Uh, I don't feel like it hinders the cutting ability of the knife at all. The transition isn't harsh like you see on, you know, some of those crazy striders where, you know, you, you can't really do a draw cut with a knife like that. I mean, it has like a, like a distinct line in the blade, like a raised portion, and sometimes they literally won't grind material off or they grind very little off and 
there's just like kind of a stick of like what the fuck do I do with that um, in the middle of the blade so um, yeah th this knife it, it's a non-issue I have to say uh, it cuts very well uh, something I did notice uh, I cut into some soft uh, 2x4 um, you know with Kenny's permission uh, I, I asked him if I could use the knife and do a rope cut test um, and th this knife, just like most knives with a steel lock insert, will experience a little bit of lock travel. No stick, uh, from what I've seen, and it doesn't travel that much, which is, of course, great. Um, so, uh, a lot of, <laughs> and I don't know if you guys remember back when I had that ZT0850, I want to say it was, I'd be cutting with it and the lock would go to 100%. And uh, that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth in terms of steel lock inserts. And I feel like if a lock's done right, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I just don't really understand the need for it, um, assuming that the lock is done right. Uh, I mean, you, you look at Chris Reeve, you look at Strider, you look at uh, a load of other makers that are um, in the eye of the community, doing things really well and uh, highly sought after knives. Uh, they just, a lot of them don't have uh, the steel lock insert. And I'm not saying like, you know, for a knife to, like the new hinderers have a steel lock insert. I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with them. Um, it's just a preference thing. So. Uh, I, I don't prefer it. I think there's a lot of benefits to titanium on steel contact. Uh, I, I also see the benefits in a steel lock bar insert. Um, I just, to me, it's not worth it. Uh, especially when you're talking about knives such as a hinderer, you know, or a strider or something like that. Um, it, it, when it comes to a knife like this, the tilt, where you're dealing with production company, that was a bad flip, but... Uh, you're dealing with a production company here, um, and parts are parts, and, you know, with a lot of these Kershaws and ZTs, once they run out, they're gone. So, I guess, I guess in that situation, I could see, uh, you know, more of a reason. But, yeah, no lock issues with this. I didn't use it hard or anything. It is rock fucking solid. Um, unbelievably solid. Uh, it, it's, um... It's one of the smoothest knives that I think, I mean, in terms of being drop shot. I mean, you guys can see, I don't want to annoy you. Um, but very, very smooth, uh, feels rock solid to me. I'm not gonna pry with this, it's not my knife. Um, I don't know, not gonna do it. Uh, nice thick blade stock. Uh, this is really, um, for me, honestly, the reason why I like a thicker blade, uh, you get a thicker tip and then you can pry. That's really it. I know somebody commented saying that, um, blade stock thickness had nothing to do with cutting performance and I, I'm well aware. Um, I don't know if maybe I just misspoke in that video, but, uh, I, I like a thick blade, uh, when it's ground thin. And in the case of the hinderer, I mean, that's a beat the fuck out of it knife, so I don't care. Um, and especially with this uh, multi-grind, I love that it maintains its uh, stock thickness pretty much all the way to the tip. So, um, imagine... Uh, how do I explain this? A hinderer with a little bit more shallow of an angle by a tiny, tiny bit with a full switch. That's pretty much what you're getting here. Um, I love it. I think it's a real great design. You can, of course, do some harder work uh, with the tip, you know. Uh, and, of course, only if you have to. Um, I carry harder use knives occasionally, whatever the fuck that even means, because I'm not sure anymore. Um, but 
Uh, yeah, I just think this is really cool, the uh, combo grind. I really enjoy it. And I love the blade shape. So I, I talk about this quite a bit. Um, I'm not a big fan of when... Um, how do I explain it? So with this knife, if I'm cutting, all the wear is going onto the tip. You guys can see that. Let me put some down. Well, I guess I don't need to. So if I'm doing draw cuts, all the wear is gonna be going onto the tip, um, maybe a small fraction of the edge. But I cannot physically, you know, get the uh, anything but pretty much the furthest point from the handle to touch the blade. Now, something like this, I like it a lot more, um, just because you don't wear that tip off. Uh, I mean, in sharpening, like, I don't really round tips off anymore. I think I'm, I've moved past that for the most part, unless it's a fucking weird design. Sometimes I'll still do it, um, but I can always bring it right back once I notice what I'm doing. Um, and that's only sometimes, so... Uh, the Lion Spy, the full-size Lion Spy, that's an example of a knife that fucked me up. Uh, so it had that real weird, um, kind of like this knife, uh, you can see like the bevel thickens up a lot. I, I was compensating for it, paying too much attention for like the base right down here, and I ended up, I, I don't even know, it's not worth getting into. But, um, in terms of ergonomics, it is a little bit sharp. Uh, it's a pretty thick knife, pretty beefy. Uh, I do like the construction, it's very simple. Two screws, and the screws are very high quality. Uh, the clip, I, I like the clip. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna care if they see the clip. I don't think they're gonna be like, oh, whoa, 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 what the fuck? Your clip has a skull on it. If you don't like skulls, the clip's not for you, obviously. Um, I, I shouldn't have to go into detail with that. Um, let's see here. So yeah, ergonomics, it's a little sharp. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, a boxy design. Um, let me just give it a good grip. Yeah, so right here kind of pushes. Uh, the clip's actually comfortable for me. What else? There's one other spot I can feel. Oh, the jimping uh, in use. It's not the, the harshest jimping in the world. I think that goes to something like this, uh, where your thumb is like pressed up right into it. Uh, that's always been one of the reasons why I like the military a lot more. Your hand can just kind of chill. And then if it makes contact, it makes contact. If not, great. But with this, uh, you kind of get that like ZT style jimping that you see on like the 0350 or the 0560. Uh, just kind of big uh, jimping, which I actually prefer to like the micro jimping. I feel like it abrades your hand less. Um, so for ergonomics, I'll say it's good. Uh, I'm going to do a rope cut test with this and we'll, I'll get, you know, a definitive answer uh, with that. Uh, steel on this guy, S35VN. Uh, it's a steel I haven't had great success with. Uh, that's actually why I bought the Hinderer in the first place to, uh, you know, get a feel for, you know, maybe a little bit different of a heat treat on uh, S35. Uh, I intend to do a rope cut test with this. I have carried this a pretty good amount. I didn't notice any, you know, premature edge damage or wear or anything like that um which is good because i did notice it with the zt uh so definitely a step in the right direction uh kind of you know kills me to think that uh you know this and i know guys some people are you know they don't give a fuck about the chinese thing it, it just kind of bums me out to think like that a knife of equal price uh, from a US company is coming in with a shit heat treat and then this seems to be okay from what I can tell so far uh, just kind of I don't know and uh, by the way guys price on this 235 um, 
Yeah, I'm sure you could find them used for a little bit less. Not that you see these too often. Um, at least used. It seems like people that buy them hold on to them. Um, what else can I say about that? Uh, I did sharpen this. It sharpened very nicely. I just put a little tiny micro bevel on it. I actually carried it uh, today and yesterday just because I know I'm going to be sending this guy back and I'm also going to send the SOCOM Elite uh, with it, which is eh, going to bum me out, but I got other knives, so um, it'll be all right. But yeah, all in all, I think it's a great EDC size. Uh, it's coming in, I mean, here's a pair of three. It's not that much bigger than a pair of three in terms of overall length. Of course, it doesn't have a choil, so, I mean, it's going to have more cutting edge, uh, but I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what my stance is on choils yet. Um, I'm still kind of split on it, although I have one, two, three, four four, five, six, seven knives with choils, and <laughs> all right, I like choils, I think. Uh, on this knife, I don't really care, um, but I don't know. This is a cool knife. I Honestly, <sighs> this is a knife that I buy, and I do this all the time, guys. I, I I'll buy it for the looks, and I'll buy it uh, for whatever reason, you know, that I come up with in my head. And just like a lot of my ZTs, I think I'd sell it. But I, th I, th I think it would be a situation where I'd buy it multiple times. Just being real. For me. For me, guys. Um, so, I don't know. I don't even know what that means. But it's one of those knives I'd probably buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. You know what I mean. Like, with a lot of those new ZTs. The 0562, I've owned like two or three of them. So, yeah, t take that for what it's worth. But all in all, I, I actually really like this knife. Um, despite some of the ergonomic issues, and this corner is painful. Uh, but it's just a badass knife. And it's not huge, and it doesn't weigh that much. So, in terms of like what it feels like it weighs... Maybe about the same as like a XM18, maybe a little bit less. Nah, it's pretty close. Um, yeah, all in all, if you can check one of these out, I definitely uh, would recommend it. Um, in terms of like, if, if you're, okay, if you think you're going to be cutting for 45 minutes with this knife and not having some pain in your palm, maybe don't get this um but if you're just looking for like a cool knife you like uh ramon chavez's work um i definitely pick it up or if you're just like an action junkie and you love that like that that is amazing that action i think it's really nice it, it's almost got recoil which is weird like this socom has recoil. This knife has more kick than the SOCOM, and the blade is smaller, thinner. Is it thinner? Yeah, it is thinner. But yeah, guys, uh, for in terms of like a smaller EDC knife, and I know it's not small, but it is smaller than like, you know, four inch blade. It's also bigger than, you know, eh, this is about a delicate size. It's not that big of a knife. I think that really puts it into perspective. This is the, like, three-inch blade. Um, yeah, I think that kind of... Because I, I feel like in a lot of videos, this knife looks a lot bigger than it is. Um, and I don't know what about it makes it look so big. I'm looking at it through the viewfinder. Um, but I think it's a cool knife. I really do. I love the hollow grind. I love the compound grind. Uh, I just, I feel like it's thin up until the point where you no longer need it to be thin, where you'd probably be doing like prying open stuff and doing all that. So I, I think it's a very well thought out knife. Um, and it's a knife that I didn't think would even be well thought out. I thought it was going to be like a flash in the pan kind of, 
Uh, oh, it looks cool. It's got some badass fucking lines to it, so whatever. But, no, I, I, I really do mean this. I think it's a very functional knife. The only thing I would change on it, and this would interfere with looks, is the handle. That's really it. Um, maybe I'd take the jimping off, but that would also interfere with looks. Well, I think the jimping... It's not painful. I, I guess it's fine. Um, but yeah. And then maybe I'd do away with the steel lock insert. By the way, perfect lock up. Right at 50%. Just how I like it. I don't know how Kenny is. Um, but tends to be around what I like. That's about 40. And then like the SOCOM and the militaries usually lock up around the same. So... That one's a little... Eh, it's about 50. So, yep. Definitely, uh, if you can, check it out. It's... I'm gonna warn you, it's probably not a knife for everybody. Um, but I think people know that, for the most part. Uh, especially if you're watching this video, considering buying it. I think that you probably already know that there's a possibility you won't like this knife. It's stunning. It, uh, you know, cutting performance is great. Uh, you know, I mean, relative to like a PM2, Para 3, if that's your benchmark cutting, you know, slicer, this is going to do pretty well for you, I think. But, all right, guys, that's all the time I have. I'm going to end the video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next.